you must realize that Africa has been abused. Africa hasn't had the opportunity to take over the world. Africa has suffered a whole lot of different things. And it's time for young people to stand up and take over Africa. Each and every young person can do it. There's nobody who's not capable of doing it. Each and every young person can do it. When we look at the difference between people who are doing it and people who aren't doing it, the only difference is what I've just explained to you. If you take this information, you run with it in whatever entrepreneurship venture, whatever business venture, whatever project, you make sure you do this. When you're listening to somebody speak, as you listen to me speak, think about your business. Do I have these insights? Do I have this depth? And apply it, apply it, apply it. And as you do that, you will surely receive success. My mandate within the presidency of South Africa is to draft policy for the fourth industrial revolution. To draft policy that will one, enhance it, two, that will make South Africa one of the most competitive nations when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution. What is the fourth industrial revolution? Let's start there. The fourth industrial revolution is where technology is capable and able to do what human beings can do. So we're looking at technology that can replace what human beings were able to do. And that would mean human beings would need to take themselves to the next level and do something else, as we've seen with the different revolutions. A lot of people are not aware, but back then, cars did not exist. Human beings actually transported one another. And when cars came into place, people said, this is going to take our jobs. You know, and today we keep seeing these evolutions happen where things continually change. When cars were a thing, aeroplanes were introduced. People said aeroplanes are going to take buses jobs. The same thing keeps happening. Human beings keep evolving. So I don't believe there's any need or anyone to ever be afraid of technology replacing them or taking their jobs. What I believe is important is that we should be excited and ready to take advantage of this. When we look at the fourth industrial revolution, these are the five things we look at. One, virtual reality. Two, blockchain technology. Three, the internet of things. Four, robotics. Five, artificial intelligence. I'm sure you've heard a new saying where they say data is now the new oil. Meaning, if you have got data, you've actually got money and you're able to do things about it. I spoke to the CEO of Vodacom. And he said to me that through artificial intelligence, meaning machine learning, where machine is now learning what you're doing, he's able to tell that people that wake up after 7 o'clock buy airtime advance. So he says that people that wake up after 7 buy airtime advance. People that wake up between 4 and 7, when they market airtime advance to these people, these people don't buy it. Right? So if this machine markets to anybody who wakes up after 7, they will usually buy a time advance. He says in December, while they were on holiday, the machine was switched off, which is this artificial intelligence machine. They lost 200 million in profit because this machine was switched off. To show the power that technology has, that one person who can code a program to say, study these human behavior, is able to create something that can create two million rand over what can be created. Now, can you imagine if you're the person who created this? The beauty of the fourth industrial revolution is that it opens the game to everybody. Everybody is able to create. Back in the day when you wanted to create something, it was very difficult because not everybody had access to specific things to create. In today's day and age, everybody has access. But the big difference, and this is the big difference that I see with many young people, and I want to touch on it. The big difference is that there is a very big lack of focus in terms of what people want to do. Everybody hears artificial intelligence, big data, virtual reality, but when you really find out what are you focusing on, you find that there's a lack of focus. And I want to teach about four very important things. I've titled them KID. K-I-D-S. Kids. And I hope everybody will remember that. The first K in kids is knowledge. If you want to master any one of these industries, my specific industry which I mastered is Bitcoin and blockchain technology. The first thing you need to do is you need to get knowledge. That's the first thing you need to do. And the knowledge that you need to get is not necessarily knowledge that sits in a textbook. It's knowledge you will get through research. That's the best type of knowledge to get. There's a scripture that I love in, in Proverbs that says, it is the pleasure of a king to search out a matter which is very, very important. You searching out a matter, finding out how did this thing work. When I started Bitcoin, I made a million rand from Bitcoin. 
before anybody told me what Bitcoin was, I knew exactly what it was. When I published my book about Bitcoin, I knew exactly what it was. I became so knowledgeable in this area that I could write an entire book about it. That when people wanted to know anything about blockchain and Bitcoin, they had to come to me. Not because I learned it from a professor, because there was no professor. It was something new. There was no textbook. It was something new. But because I learned, I took Chinese blogs, interpreted them into English, understand how does this thing work? How does it function? And I became that guru myself. Today, I'm able to stand in many different places because I taught myself these things. And this is the beauty about the fourth industrial revolution, the fact that you can teach yourself these things. Most important thing. Did you know that on YouTube, you can find videos on how to code a program like Uber, just off YouTube? without ever going to university, just learning of YouTube, you're able to find this. And this is the, 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 the good thing about the fourth industrial revolution, that anyone can participate. Once you've chosen what you want to do, get all the knowledge you can get. Every single bit of knowledge you can get on that specific topic, get that knowledge. So I've already given you the K. The next one is I. Remember I said it's kids. I is insight. Now how do you get insight? Think, ponder, meditate. Think, ponder, meditate on that specific topic. I would literally spend hours in my room thinking, if this thing called Bitcoin, if I could get it and sell it to a Chinese man who's trying to come to Africa, and make my margin of 15%. Could I take it and sell more? Could I code it? Okay, that might not work, this might work. I'll do it like this, I'll change it. Hear this, okay, I'm gonna bring this in. Every bit of information that came in, because I had the knowledge already, I started to think about it, I was meditating. I allowed it to be something that I constantly thought about. I, I made sure that the knowledge was constantly on my mind. The big mistake is that when people are looking for insights, they don't keep it in their mind. So, for example, I was listening to, to the gentleman before me, I, I believe his name is Watson, he was talking about starting a business, right? The biggest problem is that when people listen to that, they don't have the business in mind. So there is no insight happening. There, there's no insight at all. The important thing is when you find what you want to do, make sure whatever you're listening to, even if I'm listening to somebody speak on the side of the road, and they said, my friend, I did it like this, I'm thinking of that thing that I want to achieve. Whatever area I've chosen, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm, thinking, I'm looking for specific things to say, what insight can I get out of this? And you'll realize that most of the insight will come in ways that you might not even have expected. I bought Bitcoin because the pastor said, once you know something, who taught you how to think small? Did anybody else buy Bitcoin when they heard that? Perhaps they didn't. What did they buy? That should be the question we should ask them. That when you heard that, when you heard Pastor Bidiawal say that, what did you go and do with that word? What were you thinking about? If you don't have anything that's occupying you, when the word comes, you, it, it, it's like it's bouncing off. When the word comes, it comes with grace. You take it and you run with it. But you must have something that you're trying to solve. You must have something. Currently, the president has said to us that we need to come up with apps to protect women in the country. Currently. This was, was obviously released after everything that's happening. And in my mind, all I'm thinking about is apps to protect women. When I'm listening to something, I'm thinking about it. If somebody says you can do it, in my mind, they're saying what? I can do the app too? Do you see what I'm talking about? The D is depth. Now, many people start something. Along the way, it dwindles, it slows down, difficulty comes, they change their mind, they move from that thing, they no longer focus on it. Along, I'm starting at something. Along the way, it just dies out, it dies out. The reason it dies out is because there is no depth. That's the reason it dies out, there is no depth. How do you get depth? How do you ensure that something is so in you that no matter what the challenges are, you are sticking to that course? How do you ensure that this thing is deep, deep, deep in you? There's one very important principle to ensure this, and that's asking yourself why. It's that simple. Ask yourself why. So I would ask myself, if I'm buying this Bitcoin, why am I buying this Bitcoin? Why would this Bitcoin benefit me in my life? Why would I want to do this for a living? Why am I passionate about this? And when these questions come, I ask myself and I answer them. I answer them until my why is so strong that the only thing left is for me to take action.
Many people start something without asking the why. And when something very small comes, they already moved on to it. They, they, they're out. There was no depth in what they were doing. I was very shocked when uh, Mark Zuckerberg, who, who started Facebook, when he was being interviewed, and he said something that I sat down and I said, if this man can do it, we can all do it. They asked him a question and they said, when you started Facebook, did you think that it will ever become this big? And he said, in actual fact, we thought it was going to fail. That's what he said. He said, in actual fact, we thought it was going to fail. Because we thought we were students in university just trying something. And when I heard this, I said, this man lacks depth. This is an answer of somebody who lacks depth. Yet you find people that have got intense depth within them. And they, 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 they don't continue to pursue the idea. Whereas somebody with not even much depth, who thought it was going to fail, is able to build a company that can take over the whole world. What about somebody who's got the depth? What about somebody who knows why they're doing this thing? What about somebody who's convicted beyond any reasonable doubt that what they are doing is going to become successful, that it's going to work out? This is the right person. And when we go into the fourth industrial revolution, you need to have this attitude because we're going into an unseen world. I had not seen anyone else do Bitcoin before. There was no other example. There was nobody on television who had done it before. But because I had depth, my why was very clear. I, it was extremely clear. I had, I had so, so written it down, it was very clear. In part of finding out my why, I went around asking people who had just graduated. I said to them, how much do you earn? And they said, I'm earning 7,000. I said, hmm, you've just graduated. They said, yes. I said, this I will not be able to survive on. My why became what? Stronger. To say this Bitcoin thing needs to work. My why intensified. The last thing is S. I said kids, right? K for? I for? D for? S, strategy. You must have a strategy, a road plan, a map. How am I going to get there? Very, very important. What's my strategy to getting there? I, I, I hope that you will remember this. I've simplified it like this so that you keep remembering. Just remember kid. Kids. Always remember kids. So with whatever you want to do as an entrepreneur, as a business person, start with this method. Use this method. Usually business plans don't work because they don't engage you. This method works very, very well. Use this method. Knowledge. Get all the knowledge you can get. Insight. Meditate on this thing. Ponder on it until it becomes a part of you. Whatever you hear, you assimilate to it. You use it in that model. D, depth. Ask yourself why. Keep asking why. If it doesn't make sense, keep asking why. Why, why, why? Until you get so convicted that there's nothing else for you to do it. And S, strategy. Very, very important. Lastly, I want to encourage every single young person who's involved in any technology startups. You must realize that Africa has been abused. Africa hasn't had the opportunity to take over the world. Africa has suffered a whole lot of different things. And it's time for young people to stand up and take over Africa. Each and every young person can do it. There's nobody who's not capable of doing it. Each and every young person can do it. When we look at the difference between people who are doing it and people who aren't doing it, the only difference is what I've just explained to you. If you take this information, you run with it in whatever entrepreneurship venture, whatever business venture, whatever project, you make sure you do this. When you're listening to somebody speak, as you listen to me speak, think about your business. Do I have these insights? Do I have this depth? And apply it, apply it, apply it. And as you do that, you will surely receive success. I'm very happy to see young people. Thank you so much to all of you.